In chapter 11 of the first DVD in this series, we went over a simple technique called detail normal mapping. And detail normal mapping was uh, a technique where we took two textures and multiplied them together. One was the base texture, and the second one was the detail texture. And we did that so that when you zoomed in on the object, uh, there was more detail to be seen. Generally, when you zoom in on a texture, uh, there are more pixels than there are texels, and so the texture tends to get blown out. But with detail mapping, we were able to uh, overcome that by adding more detail in with this second texture. Now in this chapter, we're going to go over a technique called detail normal mapping, which is similar, uh, but where we use two normal maps instead of two diffuse maps. The first thing I want to do is show you the reasoning behind this technique. So here we have a simple scene with a brick texture and a brick normal map. And it's applied to our teapot as well as to the ground plane here. And what I want to show you is when I zoom in on these bricks, they kind of break down. They, there comes a point where they just get kind of blurry. And what we want to do here is add an additional normal map so that there's more detail here to see when we get up close to the scene. So the first thing I want to do is just jump over to Photoshop really quick and show you what our two textures look like that we're going to be using. So I'll bring up Photoshop and here is our brick normal map. This is just our standard uh, base brick texture and here's the texture that we're going to be using for our detail normal map. It's just kind of a, a subtle noise that's going to add some more detail uh, into our brick texture so that we zoom in on it. It doesn't just become blurry, but we actually have this noise to, to fall back on when we're up close to the texture. So let's get to work in our shader. We'll bring up uh, Effects Composer here. And the first thing that we need to do is add a new slot for our detail normal map. So I'm just going to clone this texture UI element and paste it in here and instead of normal map we're gonna call this one detail normal map and here for the UI name we'll call it detail normal map now we need to add a sampler for that UI element so I'm gonna clone my normal map sampler and we're gonna call this detail normal map sampler and it's going to be sampling our detail normal map. All right, and here is my uh, material editor settings. Now I'm just going to hit save here, and what you'll see when I save this is that the UI updates, and now I have this new slot called uh, detail normal map. So I'm going to come in here, and I'm going to add my detail normal map and bricks detail to that slot. Now nothing happens here in Max because obviously I haven't written the code yet to actually use that texture. So let's jump in and actually write the code that we need to use our detail normal map. We'll come down here to our pixel shader and the first thing that we want to do is sample the detail normal map. So I'm just going to select this line where we're sampling our normal map and I'm going to paste in a, a new line here and we're going to call it our detail normal and instead of sampling from the normal map sampler we're going to sample from the detail normal map sampler now right here what we want to do is just add some code that will make our texture coordinates smaller so I'm going to multiply our texture coordinates by six uh, just to start out with um, uh, for the detail effect. All right, I'm going to save that. Now, if we were doing a, a regular detail map effect, we would just multiply the diffuse texture by the detail, by the detail texture. Uh, but in this case, we're doing it with a normal. And normals have to be treated like vectors uh, instead of just like colors. So I'm going to come down here. First of all, I'm going to show you what it looks like if you do it wrong. 
that's always kind of an interesting thing to look at. So we're going to say float3, or I'm sorry, not float3. We're just going to say normal. We're going to replace our normal component with this new one. Normal equals, and we're going to say, we're going to multiply our normal vector times our detail normal and save it and let's see what we get. Ah, now did you notice how our normal map just basically flattened out and went away? If you look really close here, you can see some hints of our detail texture coming in, uh, but it, it doesn't look right. And uh, I'm just going to comment this out and save it again. I want you to watch what happens over here. See how the, the normal just punched out when we did that? Uh, multiplying our normal vector times our detail normal vector is really killing the, the normal vector. And so what we actually want to do is something a little bit different. What I'm going to say is we're going to make a new float3. And the float3 is going to have three components. So I'm just putting in the brackets here. The first component is going to be normal.x plus detail normal.x. So I'll add these two components together. The second component of our float3 is going to be the y component normal.y plus detail normal.y. So what we're doing is we're adding the x and the y components of our normal and our detail normal. And then for the z component, in this case, I'm just going to say normal.z. So we're not using the z component of the detail normal at all. We're just using the z component of the normal. So x plus x, y plus y, and then z of the normal. All right, so let's save that and see what we get. All right, did you notice that? It was kind of subtle over here. If you're out at about this distance, you can't really see the detail normal at all. But if you zoom in, once you get about here, it starts to become kind of subtly apparent. And when I zoom in, ah, look at that. Now you can see there's a lot more detail going on here than there was before. And this is exactly what we're talking about when we're talking about our detail normal. Now, the next thing that I want to do is add two controls to, to give us a little bit more control over what's happening with this effect. First of all, in our shader, when I added our detail normal map, line here, I just hard-coded this time 6 value. And what we actually want to do is give the user the ability to control how tight or large uh, the detail normal mapping effect is. So I'm going to come up here to the top and I have one uh, float UI element which is our glossiness. And so I'm going to clone that and bring that down here and instead of glossiness, we're going to call it detail size. It's going to be a slider. Our minimum is going to be 1. And our maximum is going to be, I don't know, let's say 30. Our UI step is going to be 1. And then our UI name is going to be detail size, all right, and then we're going to make our default 6 uh, using the value that we have now. So I'm going to copy this variable name and bring it down here to the pixel shader and instead of times 6, we're going to say times detail size. So I'll save that, come back over here to max. Now you'll notice I have this new slider, or spinner rather, called detail size, and I can change it and make the detail really tight. Boy, if I go all the way up to 20, then I have to zoom way in to even see it at all. Uh, or I can come down here and go to a value maybe 4 
or three, now you can actually see the detail texture when you're a little bit further out. So this really depends on how close you think that the viewer is going to be getting. So you can set this value to one, and then you can see it, you know, at a regular distance, or three at sort of a medium distance, or you know, like we had it at before at six when you zoom in a lot, or much higher than that. And like I said, you really have to zoom in to see it. So there's uh, one control that lets us control the size of the detail, uh, the detail map. And then the other control that I wanted to add is a multiplier over the height of the detail normal map. So again, let's come back up here to the UI. We'll copy this detail size element and bring it down here. And we're going to call this one detail height. All right, and our minimum is going to be zero in this case, and our maximum is going to be two, and our step is going to be 0 0.01, and for the UI name, we're going to call it detail height. We're going to default this to a value of one. So now I'll copy our detail height var variable and come down here again to our detail normal line. Come over here to the end and we're going to multiply our vector by our detail height value. All right, we'll save it. And now we have another slider here called detail height. So let's try out this slider and see what we get. I'm going to come down here to zero and oh look it's it's getting really dark so I think that the place that we added it in our code isn't working quite right If we come up to two you can see that it's doing some really funky stuff to the normal So let's come back over here to effects composer and I think what our problem is is kind of an order of operations issue so what I'm going to do is I'm going to take our detail height out of right here and instead of multiplying it by our detail normal, I'm going to multiply it by detail normal dot x right here, and also detail normal dot y right there. Let's save that, and we'll zoom in here again so you can see what's happening. So here's our detail height value. If we set it to, if we right click on our spinner, that sets it to zero. We're going to do that. Now we've got no detail normal mapping and I'm just gonna kinda click on it slowly and what you'll notice is that it's just slowly dialing itself in as I bring it up it gets more and more detail and right around one that's kind of our default value but then we can also punch it up to two and that really makes the detail values or the, the detail stand out um, so we can see, uh, see it from back here. Actually, let's go up here and set set our limit to something crazy like five. So our UI max, we're going to allow it to go up to five. And then we're just going to set our, our value to five. Wow, <laughs> we can get some crazy looking detail on there. Not so apparent when we're back here, but when we zoom in, it's just too much. So let's set it back to something like, uh, I think one was the best actually. But anyway, you can you get the idea. So now we have these, these two controls where we can give the user uh, the control that they need over how much the detail normal is tiling and also how high or low or how much the detail is affecting the underlying normal map. So giving the user uh, the control that they need over the effect. So there you have it. That's uh, detail normal mapping. Uh, an easy way to combine two normal maps, one tiled a lot tighter than the other one, to, to give more detail uh, when the camera gets close to the scene. In our next chapter, we're going to talk about vertex color and alpha. And I'm going to show you how to bring the input of vertex color and vertex alpha 
in from 3ds max to your shader and then a couple of different methods of using that data inside your shader itself. 